Center for Republic Broadcasting. Everybody, I'm Alden Moeller, and welcome back to PTLE. This episode, we're going to be covering another PBS station in New England, Maryland Public Television. Originally known as the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting, they first started out in 1969 as a single channel, WMPB. Throughout the early to mid-70s, they started satellite channels to broadcast in Salisbury, Hagerstown, and Annapolis. They are most well known for their long-lasting series, Wall Street Week, which is where I was able to snag most of the earlier logos. Anywho, we have 13 logos to go through this episode, some with lots of variants. Maybe that's what I should have done for episode 20. Anyways, go grab a Chuck Peak Crab and an ID bracelet if you plan to drink beer, because there's a lot of talk about this episode. You need an ID bracelet if you plan to drink beer. So, both Logopedia and Deception list the logo that was seen from 1969 until 1971, or 1972 if you're on Deception. However, I can't seem to find anything from this period. Existence of this supposed logo was further disputed by the next logo, the Migrating Heptagons. Both Logopedia and CLG Wiki say it was used from 1971 until 1976. However, I uncovered an audio recording of the logo from November of 1970, as well as uses of the logo until at least 1978. This is one of the logos today that has a lot of variants, however they are only with the announcer and the music. I'm going to categorize them into two to make it easier to understand. The first category has three logos. These are the main variants. The first one has an ascending electric piano theme, and the second has a seven note brass jingle. The first has an announcer that says from the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting, and the second has an announcer that says produced live in the studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. The third is an announcer variant of the second, in which he says pre-recorded at the studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. From the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. Produce live in the studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. Pre recorded in the studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. The second category has all the other variants. There are two reorchestrated versions of the electric piano theme and a variant with a child announcer. From the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. From the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. in the studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. This is a very nice logo, especially for the 1970s. This is one of the very first, if not the first, PBS logo for affiliates, with Georgia Public Television coming in a neck and neck tie. The synth is pleasurable, and even if you get the brass theme instead, it's always nice to hear the announcer. We also have some really good scanimation, especially for 1970. This is a really nice start to today's episode. Next up, we have a very rare logo with only one known recording to exist. This recording is from 1978, and it was allegedly seen from 1976 until 1979. I call it the Spinning Heptagon. From the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. This logo's okay. The scanimation here is a whole lot more unimpressive, but the music makes up for it with impressive synth layering and just overall being a nice piece. Now, let's take a small detour to talk about Maryland Night TV. There are two logos, one from 1977 and one from 1980. I will play them both. Uh -huh. 
produced by the Division of Instructional Television, Maryland State Department of Education. <laughs> Produced by the Division of Instructional Television. First one is pretty nice. I can imagine it's probably cell animated and it's very well done. However, the second is very ugly and just not all that good of a logo. Anywho, this next logo is a massive improvement in the animation department. I call it the Heptagon Color Blast, and it was seen from 1979 till 1984. That's a good logo. I stopped using synth at this point, and it's awesome. The music here shows very nice qualities, but that's not to understate the animation, because it's probably the best part. It's the best animation so far today. The next look is also very nice with the first CGI of the station. I'm on about KWSU. I'm on about the stop MPT, seen from 1984 until 1987. I also got a station ID that animates differently. This is Maryland Public Television, WMPT, Channel 22, Annapolis, and W62AY, Channel 62, Frederick. Despite the KWSU jokes, this is a legitimately good logo. I think SC Media Works are like this. Anyways, let's move on to the next logo. This logo is the worst from the station. I'm talking about the globe, seen from 1986 until 1994. I have some variants, and some are station IDs. I only have pictures. This logo is bad. The CGI here is very cheesy, and it's ironic considering they made it more complex here than the logo before this. The music isn't anything special either. This logo did not deserve to be used longer than the previous. However, this next one's pretty good. It was seen from 1992 until 1999, and I call it the Globe 2. <laughs> There are also some superimposed versions. This logo has better CGI than the previous, although the music is somewhat annoying. Moving on, they changed the logo in 1999 to something different. I call it the Scribble M, and it was seen from 1999 until 2004. I also have a variant with a wireframe globe in the background. The album looks very kid-like, and it reminds me of CPT's wordmark in a bad way. This next logo is just a local variant, seen from 1999 until 2002. I also have a picture of a station ID. I like this better than the previous, but the scribble is still very odd to look at. So to account for the PBS rebrand in 2002, they changed the logo to the MPT Aurora, seen from 2004 until 2008. This is another one of the logos that has a lot of variants. There are opening and closing versions. Let's start with the opening ones. Sometimes it can mention the name of the show. The following program is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. Direct Connection is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. Business Connection is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. Now there are also closing variants. In the logo's first year, it would have the previous logo's emblem, and earlier on in the logo's life, it was on a red background. This logo is pretty okay. The main problem is the whole aesthetic. PBS's 2002 rebrand, I'll admit, is a bit annoying, especially the music. They ended up changing the logo a short time afterward, bringing out to the flipping PBS crystal, which has been seen ever since 2008. This one also has a lot of variants, with opening and closing variants as well. Again, let's go in at the opening ones first. There are four. One is a Real Changes variant, one is a Direct Connection variant, and one is a State Circle variant in red. 
This program is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. This program was made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities. Preview and support our programs at mpt.org slash real changes. Direct Connection is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. State Circle is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. I also have a station ID for celebrating 50 years of operation. MPT, celebrating 50 years of TV worth watching. Made possible by the generous contributions of our many members, charitable foundations, and our community and corporate partners. Many thanks. Lastly, the closing variants. I have four. One is for National Air Productions, one is red, and one is orange. <laughs> This program was made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities. Quite a nice logo, actually. Some nice CGI, although it is pretty outdated for today. Well, that's all the logos as of yet for Maryland Public Television. Like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you at Agencia another time. Good night. Funding for Public Television Logo Evolution, among other programs on our WTVL, is provided by the Lousy Plains Foundation.